overconsumption of nutrients can be a precursor to what we call metabolic inflexibility, mitochondrial dysfunction, and dysregulation of metabolic health. This paper summarizes potential mechanisms by which excess fuel and insulin resistance may result in metabolic inflexibility, obesity, as well as dysregulation in overall cardiometabolic health. My name is Dr. Biff Palmer, and on behalf of my co-author, Dr. Deborah Clegg, I invite you to read an upcoming paper in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Metabolic Flexibility and its impact on health outcomes. Now, we define metabolic flexibility as the ability to rapidly switch between what is called the absorptive and the post-absorptive state. The absorptive state describes that situation immediately after a meal. In that situation, as you well know, glycolysis and pyruvate oxidation are the main sources of fuel. A byproduct of that metabolism is the formation of malonyl-CoA that it suppresses fatty acid oxidation. On the other hand, in the post-absorptive state or a fasting state, reductions in insulin and increases in glucagon create a situation where we have lipolysis and fatty acid oxidation becomes then the preferred fuel source, sparing glucose use for other tissues. So, in other words, we can see that metabolites that occur as a result of glycolysis can secondarily inhibit fatty acid oxidation and intermediates from fatty acid oxidation impair uh, glycolysis. So you have a situation where there is switching between lipid or carbohydrate as fuel, a, a rapid ability to switch between the two, a, a metabolically flexible state. We view this as a uh, vestige of evolution based on what the eating patterns were likely to be in our ancestors, where there were probably prolonged periods of no food intake as people were foraging for food. Now contrast that metabolically flexible state, this, these prolonged periods of no food intake to what we currently uh, consume on a daily basis in the modern area. We have chronic overnutrition. This then creates as we describe a situation where there's both lipids and carbohydrate metabolites being, in essence, force-fed into the uh, mitochondria, electron equivalents. And as a consequence of this, the, uh, there becomes derangements. Uh, and uh, these are some of the things that we describe are incomplete fatty acid uh, metabolism the formation of molecules like acyl carnitines and the like. And uh, this mitochondrial congestion, if you will, is even made worse when you combine it with a situation of less energy demand, that is inactivity. And so uh, this then ultimately translates into clinical phenomena such as insulin resistance and overt clinical uh, disease. Now, a histologic manifestation of these derangements can be the accumulation of lipid in tissues such as skeletal muscle. And we know that in obesity and type two diabetes, uh, triglyceride accumulations can be associated with uh, insulin resistance. One of the uh, features of the, the paper is we also describe another situation where lipids can accumulate, for example, in skeletal muscle, but it may not be maladaptive. And that's been referred to as, for example, the athlete's paradox. In people who are well-trained athletes, they may have lipids accumulating in skeletal muscle, but it's constantly serving as a reservoir of fuel. So these lipid accumulations become depleted, and then they're re-repleted during the uh, rest period. Contrast that with what's occurring in obesity and diabetes, where these lipid accumulations are persist. They're a stagnant pool. We conclude the article by then addressing, well, what can be done to treat so-called metabolic inflexibility? And we really focus on maneuvers that can address the imbalance between carbon inflow into the mitochondria, what can be done to then cause exiting of that carbon flow and with the proper formation, for example, of ATP. Obviously, one way to do that is to increase energy demand. So we have a description of what happens with exercise and how that can impact favorably on metabolic flexibility. We also devote a section to the use of fasting 
and fasting related diets and how that might have benefit as well. In fact, we reviewed data to show that fasting elit elicits evolutionary conserved mechanisms that improve metabolic flexibility. We talk about the beneficial effects of ketone bodies, something that's not as well appreciated. Lastly, we turn our attention to uh, data regarding the SGLT2 inhibitors. This is a drug class that clearly seems to have a great deal of cardiovascular benefit. And we talk about the idea that these drugs, in essence, create a fasting state through the forced excretion of glucose into the urine. So I would just conclude by saying one of the things that we really focus in on the paper is the idea that overconsumption of nutrients can be a precursor to metabolic inflexibility and mitochondrial dysfunction. We talk about the potential mechanisms by which excess fuel and insulin resistance can lead to metabolic inflexibility. And then uh, we would like to propose that as the epidemic of obesity continues to expand, it's important for clinicians to understand the origins of this disease and that clinicians are gonna be asked to provide patients information regarding the health risks associated with obesity and insulin resistance, and perhaps explain some of the mechanisms that may be involved. And we believe that our paper could provide a useful resource for conveying this type of information. So again, I invite you to read the paper and I appreciate the, the time that it takes to do so. So thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.